Now it's two way two matrix. I could actually just you know, solve quadratic equation. But remember, if you have a symmetry, choose it. And there is one symmetry that's so obvious that we didn't even think about it. What happens to this system is if I translate and put it someplace else, its energy doesn't change. It's Galilean invariance of the, this problem. So I have a continuous translation symmetry. Whenever you have continuous symmetries, it suffices to understand what happens for infinitesimal change. So if I just change all coordinates by a little amount, then I'll find out that H acting on all coordinates should be H acting on slightly shifted coordinates. Because remember what the Hamiltonian is? It depended on the distances between the pairwise distances between particles. It didn't depend on if I change uh, them all by the same amount. Measured in any translated coordinate, these two parts are the same, H depend. Uh, and that means that the extra term satisfies the equation that uh, H acting on the extra term is zero. And you know, this is a matrix. So this is a matrix of zero, which I write as one times matrix. In other words, a zero mode in the lingua of the subject. And the general principle is whenever you have continuous symmetry, there should be zero eigenmodes. What is now the meaning of the other eigenmode? So now we know the eigenvalue is just the sum because this one is zero. So what's its meaning? Whenever you have a zero eigenmode, the other eigenvector is not obvious because you can add this eigenmode to it. We can compute delta x for the eigenmode, and it just kind of changes its orientation. But in this case, there is a natural orientation. We can go into the central mass in which we make sure that the three momenta of these three particles add up to zero and remain added up to zero. And the physical meaning of this eigenmode is that the two oxygens are going in one direction, the carbon in the middle is going in the other direction in such a way that any instant in time, the central mass is not moving. So now, Having used symmetry and totally solved this problem of a carbon dioxide, we now understand also the physics of its eigenmodes. The anti-symmetric solution is the one in which carbon just sits and the two oxygens go in and out in unison. The other mode is the continuous symmetry mode saying that I can keep the thing here or I can put it there. Energy doesn't change as long as distance is the same. The energy of system doesn't change. It just depends on internal distances. That's a zero mode. Consequence of continuous symmetry of the problem. And the remainder is a non-trivial mode in which the carbon moves in these directions, the two oxygens move in the opposite direction in such a way that every instant in time, the center of mass of the system hasn't moved. It was solved all by hand and using symmetry. When you have a real problem in chemistry or in celestial mechanics, you might have thousand dimensions in your calculation. You still might have a symmetry just under the flip of a coordinate. You often, very often do that block diagonalizes the thing in two pieces. Now that each piece is a matrix of some dimension d plus and d minus. And now usually you have to do real work. You have to compute in those blocks separately by diagonalizing your own computer. But the saving using the symmetry is enormous and totally essential and never do a calculation without first using all symmetries. Now, I keep saying this because my students and do fluid dynamics for some reason never want to use symmetry <laughs> because the pictures are pretty and they don't want to do calculation using this. If you're a chemist or 
condensed matter physicists. They teach you quantum mechanics in such a way that you don't know how to do any calculation without the symmetry. But this principle is true of all calculations in classical or quantum.